Sophie Lawson from sophielawson.com and this is episode 25 of the Sophie Art Podcast which is a little podcast I do each week about art and things and this one's going to be a spontaneous A to Z of art so I'm just going to run through the alphabet I haven't put any thought into it and the first thing that comes to mind to do with art is going to be what the letter is for and then I'll just talk a little bit about it. It might, I think it might be quite a fun one. So that's coming, that's the main topic. You can find show notes and stuff at sofreeart.com. I think that's it really. This podcast um, was going to be completely different because I woke up this morning and it was going to be about automatic writing which is something I've been doing every single day for, I think it's 168 days now. It's the first thing thing I do in the morning and it's been really helpful for so many things and I I feel like it's, it could be quite amazing if you did automatic writing. It could really help you with your art. So I, I would like to have talked about that today, but while I was at work, I had this idea of doing this A to Z one and I just think it's. I want to do it now because if I don't do it now, I would have too much time to think about all of the letters and it wouldn't be as spontaneous. But I was thinking that what I might do is um, maybe the, the next episode or a later episode, I'll do a proper A to Z where I actually plan it out and stuff. And then it might be quite nice to see like what comes up when I plan it a bit better. <laughs> so... Um, And the other thing was that there's another podcast I really want to do, but I need to plan it a bit more, because the podcast this week was going to be about paradoxes. So that's paradoxes in art and paradoxes in life, because I love paradoxes, and I think paradoxes are where, like, all of the... I think paradoxes are where wisdom is, really, because I think the universe itself is a massive paradox, um, and with art, there are so many paradoxes, and I've, I've, what I need to do is I need to write them all down so that I can proper talk about them. But like just off the top of my head, a couple of them are like, um, like the paradox of when you have a drawing, if you make a part of the drawing, say you got a piece of the drawing and you want to make it darker, you can make that piece of the drawing darker by making everything else lighter or the other way around so that's kind of a paradox because you, it means you can change things without changing the thing you're trying to change <laughs> which is quite funny and then like, another one is um, how you can do better drawing you can draw something more accurately by not trying to draw the thing you're drawing but drawing the shapes around the thing you're trying to draw because it means that you're forget you start forgetting about what you're trying to draw and the mind can't draw the mind isn't going to start drawing what it thinks it's seeing you're you're only going to be drawing the shapes and that's another paradox because it means you can do a better drawing by not drawing the thing you want to draw (laughs) but there's so many of those and I, I, I can't wait to do that podcast but I want like I say I want to do a bit more planning on that one but I think that might be next week's but this one is going to be all about the A to Z of art. Um, some of these letters, because I've just, I've, what I've done is I've wrote all of the letters down, and as I'm writing, as I come up with the idea, I'm going to write it down um, for the show notes. So, but I'm looking at some of these letters, and I haven't got a clue what I'm going to say for those. <laughs> so I'll probably have to edit out a lot, a bit of the silence. Actually, no, I won't. This is spontaneous. <laughs> So let's start with the letter A. And what springs to mind is the word abstract, which I actually did a podcast about that a few episodes ago, about abstract painting. And so I would say letter A is abstract because what I didn't realise was that abstract painting isn't as abstract as you think because there is some sort of like structure to it. So even though it is, it is abstract and random, 
there's still some sort of structure going. That's kind of like a paradox. <laughs> Abstract is a paradox because, like I said, you are making it up, but but you'll notice patterns in it. So even though it's random, it's not. So that's letter A. I'm going to try and do these a bit quick because otherwise it could go on forever. <laughs> um, the next one, letter B. What springs to mind is two. It's either boring exercises. <laughs> Cause there's, a, there's a load of boring drawing exercises. But then I also thought book. Because that's where you get all the wisdom. I think I'm going to go with boring exercises. That's the first one that came up. So B is for boring exercises, which I feel are, it's kind of like part of the experience really. And you can, I've, I've noticed you can grow to love them because you see results, but they they are still quite sometimes boring. And you could also say like tedious. An example of one of these would be, there's a drawing exercise which helps improve your hand-to-eye coordination. And it's called the blind, it could have been, here's another one for B, blind contour drawing. <laughs> See, when I do this one properly, without spontaneous, B would probably be blind contour drawings. Because it's, um, what you're doing there is you're, you've got a really complicated object in your hand. Such as, um, like what I normally do is a scrunched up piece of paper. And if you like look at that... It's just a complete mess of random lines and shapes. So what the reason what you do is you hold that in your hand and you get your pencil on the piece of paper and what you do is you look at the object, you stare at the shape, the complicated shape, which could also be like the palm of your hand with all the lines on it. Um, and you stare at that without being able to see the paper and the pencil. And you set a timer of, say, five minutes or something and then you spend that five minutes staring at the shape with your eyes and your right ha your drawing hand which is out of your vision is drawing the lines on the pa on the paper so you don't you never see what you're actually drawing until the end and all you'll end up with is a mass of just messy lines but what it does is it over time it means that you can start looking at Say you're at life drawing class and you've got a model in front of you. You can start looking at the model without having to look at your pencil. So you can start drawing without having to look at what you're drawing. And that helps improve your hand-to-eye coordination. So it helps your like proportions and stuff. But the thing is, it's a really, it can be a really tedious exercise. It's especially hard to start doing because it's, because you sort of think it's boring, you end up making it like a bit boring or like tedious but it's one of these things that once you start doing it like before you know it the time has disappeared and you sometimes th I finish those and I, I kind of want to keep doing them <laughs> so even that's another paradox <laughs> even though it's it can be a bit tedious you enjoy it by the end of it I think it's just starting it that's the hardest bit so B, B is boring exercises um, number s letter C do you know what do you know what springs to mind? I'm going to say it. Crap drawings. <laughs> so C is crap drawings. And what's that what that is about is the amount of like crap drawings you have to do. <laughs> That's funny. The amount of crap drawings you have to do again this is like part of the process. In order to get to your good drawings, you have to go through a bunch of crap drawings. And this always happens, so, like, when I started doing gesture drawings, I don't know how long, but there was just months of doing, like, crap gesture drawings. And it can be a little bit, it can be a bit demoralising when you're not able to draw what you want. It doesn't look like what you want it to look like, but if you know that you have to do these crap drawings <laughs> in order to get to the good ones... Like, you kind of enjoy it, and then the good thing about that is all these crap drawings actually help you later on, because, like, say in five months' time or something, you'll look back at your drawings that you've done, and you'll realise how crap they are. 
because <laughs> they get they get even more crapper with time. <laughs> so as as the time passes, they become more crapper because you're getting better. So they're getting. But actually, sometimes this could be another paradox. I think this is going to be all about paradoxes again. Sometimes you look at those drawings that you thought were crap at the time, and they they actually some of them are sometimes better. So some of them age better, and some of them, but most of them do get more crapper with time. So C is crap drawings. <laughs> D, the letter D is for. Do you, do you know what get, do you know what came into my head? A quote, don't give up. And that kind of goes back to the crap drawings. There's with with um with art. With the process of art, there seems to be so many times when you want to give up, not just drawing, but like painting. It does seem like a lot of stuff to do with art is about getting your mind to the right place where you don't give up. Because it's, like I've been there before where I've gone through months, I think it was 2016 was the worst one. I went through about, in 2016 I went through about, it must have been about four months or something where I, I really th felt like I was going to give up on drawing because that's when I was starting to try to draw my own characters and I was just struggling with it so much and I think I was trying so hard that I ended up just not enjoying it and I was getting burnout and stuff because I was trying too hard so that is not to give up but sometimes you have to go through that to like realise that I guess that also is part of the process is having days when you want to give up so D is just to remember don't give up <laughs> E the first thing that comes to mind is electric um, I was going to say yeah, electric eraser the first thing that comes to mind is electric eraser so I've got this well, actually, it's a battery-operated eraser, but you can also get, like, electric ones. I don't know, can you get electric ones? I think I might have just made that up. But batteries and electric is sort of the same. <laughs> so, um, let's say electric eraser slash battery eraser. And the good thing about what this is, is it's a little eraser, which is powered by batteries, which is a form of, is batteries, I don't, is batteries a form of electricity? <laughs> I think so. Do I sound stupid? <laughs> um, so what you do with these is, you've got, this, you've got this little eraser, which is operated by a battery. And it, because it's operated by a battery, it spins really quickly. And because it's spinning so quickly, it means that when you put that eraser onto a piece of paper, which has got like pencil tone on it, it's spinning so quickly that it will just really get rid of the pencil. And it's probably the the best type of eraser to get the paper back to pure white. I mean, it might not always be able to do it, but if there's any eraser that's going to be able to get rid of pencil marks, it's going to be the battery eraser or the electric eraser. So that's the first thing that comes to mind with the letter E, electric eraser. The letter F, the first thing that comes to mind is finished drawing. Yes, that's the favourite part. Um, they all say you have to enjoy the process, and you, you do, because if you don't enjoy the process, you won't be able to have any finished drawings. Definitely the favourite bit is the finished drawing because um, it's just nice having a bunch of drawings and even if it's just a little sketch that you've only done for a couple of minutes like just to have a little finished drawing or sketch or something it's kind of quite motivating and satisfying and the finished drawing is what makes all the crap drawings worth it because you'll have a little finished drawing and you'll look at it and be like so happy that it will motivate you to do more and you'll be able to look back at those crap drawings and be like thank you for the crap drawings because I've now got a finished drawing 
So like everything helps each other. So the letter F is finished drawing. And the letter G, the letter G, I would, hmm, that's interesting. Gordon King, that's what came into my head. And Gordon King is actually the first inspirational artist on the website, which is at sophielawson.com slash inspirational. If you go into the artists, Gordon King is actually the, the artist who started the entire inspirational section on the website. Because this was back in, I think it was 2014. I was, I was randomly on, I think it was eBay or something, and I saw a Gordon King painting. And it was the first time in my life, because I'd only been drawing for about a year. It was the first time in my life that I saw a piece of art that really like affected me. And I didn't realise that art could do that. And like I was so inspired by his paintings and he what he he always draws he always paints the um like female poses but he has he has a really nice flow to his like his gestures and everything i think in his paintings i saw what i wanted to do one day um but i was so inspired by his work that i had to talk about it on i wanted to talk about it on the website <coughs> i wanted to talk about it on the website and i had this idea of creating like a section of my favourite or what I now call because it actually started as my favourite artists and then when I redesigned the site last year I renamed it to Inspirational Artists so Gordon King is the first he's probably one of the most important artists for me because after him I started really looking at other people's artwork and trying to work out what I love about it so I think Gordon King is the most inspirational artist for me. So that's the letter G. The letter H is for... <laughs> oh, that's funny. What came up was handbag. Which <laughs> is kind of art related because it goes back to what I said about... I think it was last week's podcast. About always having a sketchbook with you. Um, it's like if... My sketch, my little sketchbook is inside my handbag, <laughs> so that's kind of related. I'm, I think I'm going to let myself have that one. So letter H is handbag, and it refers to always making sure you've got a sketchbook with you, because you should always make sure you've got a handbag with you. <laughs> so if you've always, if you've always got your handbag with you, which you should have, then you'll also always have your sketchbook with you, and. Last week's podcast was all about why you should always have a sketchbook. Actually, that was last week's little art tip of the week. So, and that's basically because if you've always got your sketchbook with you, then if there's ever anything that you want to draw while you're out and about, if you ever get inspired by something, like sometimes I'll see a bunch of pigeons or something um, sitting on the ground eating, and I'll just want to sketch them. Like in the park, that always happens in the park. That there's loads of pigeons, um, so it's always handy to have. A, there you go. That's H. H is for handy, having a handbag. <laughs> the letter I is for inspiration, definitely. So, I think inspiration is the most important thing with with art, and there's many, like. I'm gonna. I think what I do is I'll say something. One little thing that I do for inspiration is I have a bunch of images that inspire me. So say for instance I check my emails and I have a because Pinterest they post out these. Actually, I posted a new inspirational model to the website last week. Um, she's an amazing model, and the the way I found her was. Pinterest, they send me these emails every so often. Actually, they send about two a week, I think. And it's just full of inspirational pins. Um, pins which are drawings or, or photos and stuff that they think will inspire me. And uh, it's always full of really interesting like artwork or um, models posing. So what I normally do is I'll go 
I'll always open these emails and if there's a if there's something that really um, catches my attention I will screenshot it on my iPhone and then I'll stick it into this little folder so I now have a folder full of like inspirational art and photos um, and then you can use that for like sketching and stuff so the letter I is for inspiration and because the reason to do that is because sometimes I'll sit down to do a sketch and I maybe don't know what I want to sketch. I know I want to do some sketching, but I don't know what I want to do. Or I don't know, yeah, I don't know what to do. So all I have to do is go into this inspirational folder and I can just pick any photo in there and just start sketching that. And then before you know it, that will lead to something else. So that's for the letter I is inspiration. The letter J is for, this one's a hard one. Nothing's coming into my head. I can't think of anything. The letter J. The only thing that's coming up is Jackar, which is the company that makes my battery operated eraser. So I, I, d I can't do that. Um, jelly. <laughs> Jam. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to look on my website something with J. Actually I thought something. It's another quote. It's just go. And what this one is, so the letter J is for the quote just go. And what that is, is if you're thinking of doing something like going to life drawing class or going to art class, something like that, if you're thinking about it, then that means you want to do it and it's probably a fear holding you back from doing it because that's what happened that's what happened with me when I wanted to go to art class it took me about I think it's taken me about two months before I, I went to my first art class and it's because I was I was like scared of I was scared for so many reasons I was scared because I had at the time I was suffering with um, social anxiety so I had that, but I also was scared of what if I don't know what I'm doing and stuff. So I would just say just go because the best thing I ever did was to go to um was go was to go to art class because it I feel like that changed everything because when you go to art class it opens so many doors and you will meet people at art class who like if I hadn't if I had never gone to art class I would never have gone to my life drawing class, which I went to after. I would never have got into the, some of my exhibitions. All of my exhibitions that I've been in have all come about because of going to art class, because you meet people. And being around other artists is really like inspiring. So I would say if you have a thought that you want to go to art class, but there's too much fear there, I would say just go. Because it will be the best thing you've ever done. Um, so that's the letter J, which was quite hard to find. <laughs> the letter K is for. Um, I could use another quote, but the thing that brings the first thing is to keep going. But I think that's too similar to don't give up. The letter K, King Kong. King Kong. Knife. There you go. Knife. The letter K is for knife. And I have a knife. I have a little knife in all of my pencil cases. And the reason for that is because I have this mono eraser pen, which is an eraser shaped like a pen. So it's got a really fine point. It's my favourite eraser for doing details. But if you have a knife, when that eraser gets dirty, because you like click the end of it to get it to come out the other end, like a mechanical pencil, um, but it gets dirty and it also loses its point. So if you have a knife in your pencil case, you can always cut the end of that eraser and get a nice sharp edge again. Um, so the knife has actually been one of the most probably important things. And at first I never used to do that, but what happened was somebody emailed me saying 
because it was on a YouTube video, and somebody, um, I put a YouTube video out about this mono eraser pen when I'd first got it because I was so impressed with it, and then somebody left a comment saying, "Have you tried cutting it with a knife?" And ever since then, I've always done that. So the knife is a really handy thing for cutting razors to get nice sharp edges. So that's handy. <laughs> so that's the letter K. The letter L is for the thing that sprung to mind. I'm gonna, mm, there's two things that came in at exactly the same time. One was Loomis, which is an artist who... I'm going to go with this other one. It's Lee Hammond. So Lee Hammond... Well, Loomis is an artist who... I've got two of these books, which are figure drawing and drawing the hand and ha and <laughs> drawing the ha the head and hands. He's done these books, which everyone considers to be like the best, but I've struggled to read those. Um, but the thing that because these two names popped into my head at the same time, and the other one is Lee Hammond, and Lee Hammond is the artist who I feel like she progressed my art more than anyone else or anything else and she has this book which is how to draw realistic portraits from photographs and I started studying from that book and I think it was about six months I studied from that book and my drawings like really really improved a lot after reading that book and she also is the person who created this drawing exercise which she called segment drawings, which is where you get like a photo and you chop it into a tiny little square and then you basically draw only that tiny little square in detail. And it's only like a two inch squared drawing. So it's really small and it means you can do a really detailed drawing in like about an hour so again, you end up with a finished drawing, which is like motivating because it's nice to have a bunch of finished drawings. But you're also really practicing your realistic drawing skills, and it doesn't matter if you like mess it up because you've you only done a little drawing. Whereas if you're doing a full portrait, which will take multiple hours, if you mess that up, there's a bit more pressure. So it. By doing these little segment drawings, it kind of frees you up. So, there's a load of stuff about that on the website. I'll put a link in the show notes. Mm, but the, the artist who created that is Lee Hammond. So that is for the letter L. The letter M is for <laughs> money. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> yeah, money. Because, um, well... There's two thoughts that I've got there, which is another paradox. On the one hand, I'm thinking, you don't need much money to do drawing, because all you need is a piece of paper and a pencil. But then I'm also thinking, you do need a lot of money, because, for instance, these mono eraser pens and craft knives and everything, it all adds up, um, so you do need money. But at the same time, you don't, because if you had no money... You could quite easily do drawing with just a piece of paper and a pencil. Mm. I don't know whether that's a good one, but that's what came up. So <laughs> that's what we get. So the letter M is for money and how you don't need it, but you also do. The letter N is for nudes. <laughs> that's the word that came up. So with this is very interesting because... Something I got asked again on the website was, isn't it uncomfortable drawing nudes? And whenever I, when I was at my old job and I said about the first time I was going to life drawing class, the first thing that people would say was, like they said that they would be embarrassed to be drawing somebody who's nude. And for somebody like me who always suffered from social anxiety and stuff, and because I'm transgender, I've I'm also I had a lot of like dysphoria and stuff about my body. So the nude body has always been something kind of anxiety field, I guess, for me. 
but to go to this life drawing class with the nude model you realise that it doesn't matter um, you're not actually even aware sometimes that you're even looking at or drawing a nude model all you really see is a bunch of shapes and because everybody else is there to do drawing and to improve their skills it doesn't matter and like I said after the first time even the first time it didn't bother me um, and maybe I did think it would but it didn't so like the nude model what I've noticed is that it doesn't matter about the nude it's just a bunch of shapes um, and the other thing that's really cool is that you start seeing how everyone is different shapes and sizes and there's one model at life drawing class who she actually goes and she has um, like hairy legs and stuff which is totally not what you would consider the norm but I like that because it means it just you start to realize that like all bodies are different and it's not until you look at the nude model that you really start to see that and this also goes back to that book that I spoke about before um, I'll put a link in the show notes but there's this lady called Margaret who I speak to on email from time to time and she created this book about the nude model about the nude body um, and like celebrating the beauty of everybody's different body so I think art really does open the door um, to, for you to realise that there's nothing to be ashamed of with your body and stuff like that and life drawing class is probably where I started to learn that so N is for nude O is for like the first the first thing that came into my head was orange and then I took that orange and turned it into an oval <laughs> and then I turned that into a circle so I've kind of got to a circle from the orange so what I'm going to say is that O is for orange because the orange is a good thing to practice drawing because if you've got an orange with a light shining on it that's a good shape like the sphere of the orange is a good shape to practice um, studying light and how light and shadow works and also it's good to practice your shading skills because you can practice capturing and um, rendering darks and lights so O is for orange which is all about the shape of the sphere <laughs> That's quite funny. P is for paper. That's what came up in my head. The thing with paper, I actually did a podcast about this right at the very beginning. Um, because you would think, or I always used to think, <laughs> I always used to, I always used to, because I always used to think that paper was just paper. But it's only when you start drawing and trying different paper that you realise that each different type of paper actually can create a completely different feel and drawing so p is for paper q is for hmm the thing that came to my head was q-tip which i think i'm not sure but i think q-tip is like those cotton buds you can use these cotton buds for well some people use them for blending like pencils but what I use them for is when I'm doing my coloured pencil drawings you can actually dip the cotton bud or the q-tip into the like blending solution and you can create like a nice blend with your coloured pencils so q is for q-tip which I think is a cotton bud but I'm not sure r is for relentless because <laughs> I think you have to be relentless with drawing so when you have a day when you're drawing and it's just not going very well you have to be relentless to turn up the next day and do another drawing it's like that with everything I've noticed if you're struggling with something you have to be so relentless that whatever like obstacles come in your way you just keep going and I think the way to become relentless is to 
visualize what you want and like really feel it so much that you need it and so then you know what you want and you know why you're doing it so then when you do hit these obstacles you'll find a way to get over them because you have to because otherwise you can't have this other thing that that you're like you visualized and so you have to be relentless to never give up so I think that's what I'm going to say for R. R is for relentless. S is for... Hmm, the thing that came to my head was sellotape. Um, and there's this type of tape that I've got, which is called magic tape. And it's this type of sellotape, which it allows you to um, put the sellotape down, but you can actually like peel it off without... You can peel it and reuse it. So it, it's, it's this magic tape, which I'll put a link in the show notes. And it's basically reusable sellotape. And the reason that I love this stuff is because when I'm working on a pencil drawing on my drawing board, I can sellotape the paper. I can sellotape the paper to the drawing board with this stuff, with this magic tape. And it means that when I peel the sellotape off, it doesn't affect the paper at all because before I used this stuff I was using masking tape because that's what I saw everyone else using and what was happening was I would at the end of the drawing I would peel this masking tape off and sometimes it would rip the paper and also what it would do is because masking tape has this like it has a weird texture to it like a liney texture it would also um, put lines onto my paper so then when I tried to shade over where the tape was, I'd end up with this like imprinted shape and like liney texture on my paper, which was impossible to get rid of. So that's actually what made me research into different types of tape, And that's when I found this magic tape. And that's that really has been magic because <laughs> I've not used anything since because it just works perfectly. So... I'll um, put a link in the show notes because that stuff is amazing and you can use it for so many different things like if you were doing a painting you could actually put that um, piece of magic tape on your painting to get a nice straight edge and you would know that you're not going to leave any type of um, damage on your paper I feel like it's something everyone should have in their little like art tools is this magic tape so that's for the letter S is sellotape the letter T is for <laughs> I just thought of tomato but that's that would be linked to the sphere I've thought of a quote that I like so what sprung to my mind was take your time this is the same with doing your makeup as well there's this really good quote which is when you rush you delay um, and when you slow down that's when you speed up but I like the quote when you rush you delay because it's so true I, I remember that even when I'm at work because I work as a cleaner and if I start rushing that's when I start making mistakes so I might start rushing the job and I'll for instance not knock over the mop and bucket and then I'll have to clear up the water that I've now spilt on the floor because I was rushing which is going to delay me whereas if I had taken my time I would have got there a little bit slower but I would have I would have got there quicker because I wouldn't now have any I wouldn't have to clear up my mess <laughs> so I use that quote with everything in my life of um, when you rush you delay but if you think like take your time that is so important with drawing Especially when you're doing a realistic drawing, because what I've noticed is that you get to this point sometimes where you want to start rushing it, and you you get like impatient, I guess. And and I've noticed if I ever start rushing a drawing, it will never turn out good, or it will never turn out as good as it could if if I just slow down and took my time. And it can be a bit annoying because it obviously means everything is going to take a bit longer. But like I said, it will it, so half the time it won't take longer because if you start rushing, you'll look at what you've done and you'll think, 
I don't like that. And then you'll end up erasing it and having to redo it, but you'll redo it a bit slower, which if you had just done it slower the first time, you wouldn't have to have gone through that thing. But sometimes you have to go through that to realise that you have to slow down. <laughs> so it is quite funny how you sometimes have to rush to find out that you need to be slowing down. But I think what happens is the first time you rush, it puts something in your head to say, when I'm doing this, I need to slow down. So for, for instance, if I'm rendering hair on a portrait or fur on an animal, that's when I really have to remember to do it really slowly in like layers. Because um, the, the slower you go, with the layers and the more time you take with the layers the thicker that the hair is going to look so the more realistic it's going to look but sometimes you just want to sort of you just want to quickly rush the first few layers to get to the good stuff which is when you start putting in the fun details at the end but if you rush those first layers it will show through somehow I don't know how but it always shows through in the later layers so it means even if you take your time and do really nice like later layers to some extent the damage has been done by these earlier layers when you rushed so you ha you have to take your time at all stages if you're doing a realistic drawing but then if you're doing something else like gesture drawings that's the complete opposite which is with that you don't want to take your time you want to just completely go for it because the quicker you go with a gesture drawing the more you're going to capture like pure essence um, so that's quite funny that's kind of another like a paradoxy thing whereby a drawing is made up of going quick and going slow because you go quick with the gesture to get the essence of what you want but then you have to go slow to like render it to get the details so in a weird way they both work together but there are times when you need to take your time so t is for take your time which i guess could be like um patience really the letter u hmm i could cheat a little bit and say u as in i could turn the letter U into the word U. <laughs> I'm going to do that. It's a bit... Well, there's a U at the end of the, the word U. So that does kind of work. So the letter U is for the word U. Because the thing with drawing is it's all up to you. Everything is in your control. So it's all about, it's all about you in that... You're the one who will decide how good you get because if you, again, if you're relentless and if you want it badly enough, then you will decide how good you get because, like, drawing, what I've noticed is drawing is just a skill like anything else. Um, I don't believe in this thing of talent. I think some people maybe are naturally a little bit better at... Um, maybe the hand-to-eye coordination is a bit better or something but I honestly believe that anyone can become like an amazing artist if they want it badly enough so so I think it is all on you as to how good you get so the letter U is for the word U <laughs> that's quite funny the letter V the word that come to mind is vision and this kind of goes back to what I said before with the word of relentless. Um, when you visualise what you want, um, that will really help you become better because when you visualise something and like really feel it, it, it almost becomes real. It suddenly becomes a lot more powerful. So by visualising stuff, you can actually make yourself like really determined to achieve it whereas if you are, if you want it but you haven't visualized it it when it gets tough i think you might give up because you haven't 
really felt what it's going to be like to have that thing. I think we all have to have a vision. Because I think without a vision, you don't know where you're going. And if you don't know where you're going, you don't know if you're doing the right thing. So I feel like vision is probably the most one of the most important things. So V is for vision. W is, I'm going to say, watercolour, which is probably obvious. <laughs> but um, something I love about watercolour is how random it is. So um, something, this watercolour to me is very much a paradox because you have control over it, but you also don't. So you have control over like the colours. You can mix the colours to get the colours you want. You have control about how much you put on the paintbrush. You have control about where you put the paint on the paper. But with watercolour, even when you've made the colour, it still might be random because there might be a bit which is a bit... <laughs> there might be a bit of that colour on the paintbrush which is more watery. And so it will change colour slightly and be more transparent. So I noticed that even though you you sort of, are th even though you think you're in control of the watercolour, it will still be random. And that is what I think makes watercolour so, like, fun, is because you don't really know what it's going to do. Because I've only, I haven't done much watercolour, but that was one of the first things I noticed, was that with watercolour, it is, it's definitely the most out of control art thing I've ever done. Um, of all the paints, it's, it's the most out of control, and it's, way more out of control than pencils and charcoal because even charcoal is a bit random but watercolour is definitely the most out of control but you also have control so I really like that about watercolour so W is for watercolour X X is for hmm, the thing that came to my head was x-ray vision because this is something that Bert Dodgson said in his first book, which is when you're drawing something, you, you need to almost create an x-ray vision. You almost need to learn x-ray vision. So what he says is if if you're drawing something like, let's say you're drawing a cube, or, well, if in the book he gives the example of um, a chair. So he says if you're trying to draw a chair with like four legs, what you want to do is, this is this is interesting because this is kind of where it gets a bit paradoxical because he, drawing is all about drawing what you see, not what you know. But then by having this X-ray vision, you're putting in a bit of information. So you're you're not just drawing what you see; you are drawing what you think you see as well. Because with X-ray vision, you'll look at that chair, and let's say you're looking at looking at it from an angle from above the seat of the chair will cover like a bit of the back legs but if you can get x-ray vision you can like imagine but you can almost see the legs of the chair going through the seat and then it will allow you to see where the legs connect with the seat so that when you're drawing what you're drawing even though you're drawing what you see you can also like make sure that you're getting it as accurate as possible by being able to imagine where all the shapes are so it, it will it will like improve your perspective um, and with that he also talked about drawing through which is kind of like x-ray vision so like if you were drawing that chair you would draw the seat and then you would draw the legs and even though you couldn't see the top half of the legs because it was covered by the seat he what he recommended doing was carrying on the line of the leg like going through so drawing through the seat um so even though you can't see that he recommends still drawing it because then you can sort of check that the leg that you've drawn or the part of the leg that you've drawn actually lines up with the seat and then you can erase those lines so that's almost like um, a way of an exercise of improving your x-ray vision 
is by doing drawing through. And then it gets to a point where you can actually start looking at things and almost seeing the back of it without being able to see the back of it. Um, so that was quite um, a fun thing to learn actually, is x-ray vision. So x is for x-ray vision, y, yellow. <laughs> oh, that's the nice one. I like the colour yellow. That's the first thing that came to my head, so I have to go with it. Um, and what do I think about the colour yellow? I like the colour yellow because it reminds me of the sun. <laughs> and I like the sun. I guess what I would say about that is how, how interesting colours are. Because they're all different colours. Colours are different colours. That's quite funny. So I think what I'm going to say with this one is yellow. But I'm going to link it to colour. Because what I haven't done much work with colour. Most, most of my stuff has been pencil drawings. But the thing I love about colour is it just adds a whole new like element of fun. Because you can be a lot more expressive and creative. And yellow is definitely a bright colour. So it's probably one of the most expressive colours. So I think what I would say is why is for yellow and how much fun it is to have colour in your artwork and then the final one which is Z this goes back to earlier with the uh, this goes back to the letter K no this goes back to the letter Q with the Q-tip because what I do with my Q-tip is I dip it into this thing I dip it into this liquid which is called zest it Z-E-S-T I-T and what it is, is it's this blending stuff, which smells of like lemons. So it hasn't got a, it hasn't, it's got a really nice smell, it's not toxic or anything. And what you do is you dip your Q-tip into that, and then, well, I also use a little paintbrush. I started out using Q-tips, but then I moved on to paintbrushes. So this is really fun, because what you do is you, you put your coloured pencil onto the paper, and this works really well with um, Prismacolor Premium Pencils. And what you do is you put your pencil onto the paper and then you dip your paintbrush, a really little paintbrush. You dip it into your zest it, which is this liquid, and you, you can almost like paint on top of your coloured pencils. And you can create really nice blends like between the different colours. Um, and it, it's really beautiful and it ends up making it look... You end up with this coloured pencil drawing, which kind of almost has a painty feel to it. So I really like the way Zest It works. And I don't think I would ever do pencil drawings now without you uh, coloured pencil drawings without using Zest It. And I know they also have other stuff. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but I've only ever used the coloured pencil blending. But they also have other Zest It liquids i think some of them must be for like oil paints and stuff like that but their thing is it's called zest because it's it smells like lemon zest um so it's just a really nice way to use chemicals that would normally be harmful or like have a toxic smell it's a way of using stuff like that but having nice lemony smells <laughs> so z is for zest it and that's the end of it. So that's the complete spontaneous A to Z of art. And I'll put them all in the, sh in the show notes. And if there's any anything that links to other things, I'll like link to the products and stuff. And you can find that at sofreeart.com. I hope you enjoyed that. I actually really enjoyed that one. It was quite fun. Um, and I'm glad I did that because I wasn't going to do it. I thought maybe being spontaneous it would be too random or something but I think that added to it so this week's little art tip of the week I've actually got a new I've decided on a little like jingle or something for art tip of the week so last week's last week I introduced a new feature to the show which is the little art tip of the week and I said I was going to come up with a jingle for it and what I've decided is that So that's 
that means it's art tip of the week time and this week's art tip of the week is all about having a makeup brush and I actually recorded a YouTube video about this a few months ago um, and it's just a little 60 second video showing why I think everyone should have a little makeup brush in their pencil case and stuff I haven't actually edited that video yet I need to do that but this is a really simple little art tip but I think it's quite helpful um, and it makes it a bit more fun as well and there's a lady at art class who she has started now taking her own little makeup brush to art class because she asked me why I always have a makeup brush with me and I told her and the reason is if you're doing drawing when you start using like an eraser or something that eraser will just cover your paper with little bits of eraser and what most people do is they'll either blow it <laughs> they'll wipe it away with their fingers but if you blow it you're gonna potentially like spit on your drawing which will leave a little mark and you won't be able to get rid of that so that you could ruin your drawing like that and then if you rub the um, eraser away the oils on your finger could actually smudge your drawing so you don't really want to be doing that and so what I thought of was why don't I buy a little makeup brush and then what you can do is you just hold that I always hold my makeup brush in my left hand I draw with my right hand and then I hold my makeup brush in my left hand and whenever every so often because it's not just a razor it's also like lead from the pencils you can get little crumbs on the paper so if you just have this little makeup brush you can just quickly wipe it away and what I love about this is it also it feels really satisfying just doing that the action of wiping the paper with the makeup brush is really fun <laughs> and it sounds really nice as well so my little tip is to always have a makeup brush with you and like if you hold it in your left hand you'll get into the habit of using it to like tidy up your paper so that's this week's art tip of the week <laughs> i hope you enjoyed that and that's it for this week's podcast you can find show notes and stuff at sofreeart.com you can find me at sophielawson.com and i think that's it this week's inspirational quote goes to claire cook and it is if plan a doesn't work the alphabet has 25 more letters Claire Cook. Claire Cook.